Hey, what's up guys? So I'm back here again in Forest Lake, Minnesota, again back at Forest Lake Pets, visiting with owners Chris and Mike. But as last time, we got a tour of the saltwater room and the corals that they cultivate here at Forest Lake Pets. But this really awesome pet shop doesn't just deal in saltwaters and coral. They have one of the most amazing freshwater tropical fish shops that I have ever had the opportunity to tour. So Forest Lake Pets from the outside is a pretty unassuming place, but once you get inside in that back room, you'll see that Forest Lake Pets has one of the biggest aquarium and fish shops anywhere in the state of Minnesota. So big, in fact, that this is going to be a two-part video. So we're going in and getting an exclusive tour with owners Mike and Chris as they show us around one of the biggest and most awesome fish shops here in the state of Minnesota. <laughs> This is Chris and Mike, the owners of Forest Lake Pets. Guys, this is one of the most enormous fish departments I have ever seen in a pet shop or in a just a fish shop. How many tanks do you guys have in here? It's almost 400, I think. Yeah, yeah. we count the better jars as well. Yeah, there's count a little bit at everything. least 400, 400 yeah. tanks. <laughs> 400 fish tanks, yeah. Over 10,000 gallons? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. over 10,000. 400 tanks, 10,000 gallons. Probably thousands of fish. Oh yeah, at yeah. least. I mean, yeah. at least yeah, thousands of species yeah. of fish. Yeah, individual species of fish. We've got hundreds of them. Let alone fish. Yeah, thousands. Okay, let's take this tour. We're gonna start along this wall because this is just amazing. So, look at these guys up here. Yeah. So we got a big school of silver dollars. Some of the parrot cichlids in there, as long as as well as uh, Midas cichlid in there. Nice um, Managuense over there too. Big Managuense, he's, they call that a wolf cichlid. Also a big Severum chilling out in the middle there. And the ball of shark in the back, it's a nice big silver guy, he's hidden behind everybody right now. One of those fish people don't realize they get big. It's, Massive it's something that right they there. start out tiny and cute, Yep. and they get big, and that's not even as big as they'll get sort of a deal. Yeah. What we really want to showcase, we this love our stingrays, here. this These is our favorite girl. thing. There's our big male. He's the daddy, you'll find out why down the road yep. in some of the tanks. Um, and that's one of our moms right over there too, which you'll see uh, one of the pups a little bit later. She gave birth for her first time last month. Yeah. She is just massive. Little arowana hanging out. Yeah. He's yeah. A little yeah. shardy arowana. He's actually an Australian arowana versus a lot of them are coming out of South America. Sure. Yeah, we're really passionate about the race. Yep. That's one of our favorite things. That's my Top. favorite thing about the store. Here, right? And yeah. We even uh, we breed them out here too. Yep. All right. So let's just break into this tour for a little bit and talk about how you guys are breeding freshwater stingrays. Yeah. So we have three big females that we primarily use as our breeder group, and then we have that one male. And what we do is we just introduce the male in there for roughly one to six weeks. And usually what they'll do is they'll really bite the discs on the female, and once it looks like he's gone a little too far, then we gotta pull him out. And so it's a little rough, but it is something where usually then that means that he kinda did what he was supposed to, and then we pull him out and then leave the girls to just kind of gestate and, and um, it takes about three months it's pretty much when they get bit up it's almost three months on the dot that they're gonna be popping out babies and do you do any like seasonal cycling with water temperatures yep yeah we don't really mess with that too much usually you put them together good diet they seem happy enough he's a good one where he really just does what he's supposed to we put them in there and they breed it's something where some people have tricks and tips and things like that but we don't have to worry about it too much with him and we can breed them once or twice a year. We don't like to push them too hard. That's about the max that we would want to spawn per year with that gestation period. Right here, this is an African cichlid tank. And so primarily Mabunas, and there's other kind of haps and peacocks in this tank as well. A lot of blue manganos in there, as well as some of the red zebras. Tons of color. People love these fish because there's almost as much color as salt water in a freshwater tank. Absolutely. These yeah. guys are really territorial though. It's something where they they definitely are always chasing each other around, nipping at each other. So you, you got to make sure you got the right environment for them and the right setup for them. 
All right, and then down below, I see another stingray down here. Yep, that was a male that we rehomed for a customer, as well as a bunch of big Oscars in there. It's another one that a lot of people like outgrow a lot of fish tanks right there, so we go ahead and rehome and find right. new places to live. People mm -hmm. always expect that they're going to stay small or grow just to the size of their fish tank, but when you see a fish like that, it's obviously outgrowing. Exactly. Things. I feel like in every fish room, you got to have some fish for yourself, and so these are my big black bar silver dollars. They're one of my favorite types of silver dollars fish, relative of the Paku, as well as like the silver dollar. They're even a relative of a piranha. And so they got that real defined black bar, one of my favorite species of the silver dollar family. As well as in there, there's some real nice, there's a nice gold severum as well. And so this is a big mixed South American tank. And so we've got very silver dollars. That's an albino silver arowana in there. How rare is an albino arowana? They're becoming more common, but it's definitely something that is rare. There's a really cool bandit cichlid back there with the stripe on his eye in there. All right, so what are these, 200s? They're actually, well, they're custom-made, cut-down 200s, 180s, and so we're right around 150, 160 gallons. Um, cut them down so that we could fit three stacks high. Yep. Fantastic. All right, so in the last one in this row, this is the surprise that we had for you. Look at these little guys. So right here we got our baby stingrays. These here are our pride and joy. One of our most recent batches that we had out here. So here are the stingray pups from that pair that we saw earlier. And these pups are, I don't know, a couple months old maybe? When were these yeah. born? Yeah, yeah, right about two months. Yeah. So they were just uh, born. July 7th yep. is what they, when they were born. They come out, yeah. it's live birth. They right. come out ready to roll, ready to eat. Usually within 24 hours they're eating prepared foods and also like live black worms. Try to make sure we give them a nice variety of foods so that they don't become too picky. Right. Get a lot of different nutrients out of the foods too that way. Different shrimps. Mice and shrimp is a really big one that we like to feed them too. And so now how long do these guys live? We've got some that are over 15 years old. So I mean they can live a long time. I, yeah. I mean I wouldn't be a bit surprised 20 plus years that people can get out of them. Yep. All right, so we're going to move down this row and then we're just going to keep on going down the rows. But right here we have our bettas. So these are our newer better racks right here. We installed them not all that long ago. The nice thing about it, there's actually a nice big filter underneath them. Um, each of the different you know cubes have got water constantly running through them, making sure that they're staying nice and healthy. The boys, they're all boys inside of this rack right here. Um, they don't, they're not able to see each other, so they're not constantly flaring up and everything. Um, and you can actually just, you know, see them really well here. Kind of showcases all each of the different boys really nicely. We gotta stop and show off these guys here. These are our zebra plecos. We try to regularly have some zebra plecos around here. Really sought after Brazilian pleco. These are actually captive raised in Indonesia, but it's something that sometimes is listed as a. For the longest time, these were not shippable out of Brazil. This is our shrimp area over here and. The shrimp have been super popular because a lot of people just set up a smaller little nano tank, two to 10 gallons, and they'll set them up with one species of shrimp and they reproduce. It's really fun to see little shrimplets coming out, popping out of there and having a small group grow into a large group of them. We do have to be careful because fish will sometimes eat them, so we have to be very careful right. with what we mix with them. But otherwise it's super rewarding to pop out little baby shrimp and have just a really populated, really fun set up aquarium. Up here's a real fun one. This is a flower shrimp. So these guys are constantly filter feeding in their tank all day long. And so you can either like stir up the gravel or give them a powdered food. There's actually even a new company now that has a food specifically for these guys. And they just graze on that filter feed in the aquarium all day long. So that's all the fish in just this one aisle. There is so much more to see here. So right over here, these are the goldfish and the native fish. So this is our awesome selection of goldfish right over here. Um, not a whole lot of places can really house this many goldfish. We've got an awesome sump down there that helps to keep everything really clean. UV sterilizer too, making sure that anything that's free floating inside that water gets killed off inside there too. Um, goldfish are, I mean, one of the fish that have been, I think housed for the longest amount of time or have been kept as a pet for the longest amount of time. Thousands of years. Thousands of years. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And now, goldfish seems to be like every fish keeper's first fish that they've ever had. Mm -hmm. They had the little, yep. you know, fish bowl and that whole stereotypical, just absolutely awful way to keep a fish. That is one thing. That's a really big misconception right there. There, a lot of these goldfish should actually almost have 20 gallons per fish absolutely. for them to be able to thrive and do really well. And when you see a fish that's this big, 
I mean, it's something that they need a huge amount of room to be able to thrive inside of there and get to that size. Absolutely. So now the care for a goldfish, I mean, goldfish, they're a lot longer lived than a lot of people think. So yep. because when they had those in those kinds of conditions when we were kids, mm -hmm. they would die after a month. Not all that and, long. And that's how, mm -hmm. yeah. And so everybody thought, oh, goldfish aren't long lived, mm -hmm. but that is absolutely not true. No, not at all. I mean, they there's, I'm sure there's records of, you know, very long lived goldfish. I mean, they can live up to 20 plus years. Right. So it's something that, yeah, that little tiny bowl, you wouldn't want to live inside this little tiny bowl for almost 20 years. Exactly. You need to have a much larger environment with much more clean water for it. So a lot of fish keepers here in Minnesota, they kind of really, you know, want to not get away from, you know, keeping the tropical or the African fish, but they also want to take of the native game fish that Minnesota has to offer, and that's what you've got along this wall here. So you need a permit to sell them, but people don't need a permit to keep them. Correct, yeah. Yeah, as, a, as somebody keeping these fish, because we're licensed through the DNR, they can purchase them through us and bring them home and keep them. There's no worries. We can always rehome them. It's something that we try to make sure to stress with customers because they're never supposed to be released in wild. Anything you take from the wild is not supposed to be released back right. into the wild. Um, but it's a, it's a great fish, and there's tons of avid fishermen that love having these fish in their house. They don't require a heater. They're really easy going. They just need some clean water and good-sized tank to grow nice and healthy and happy. That's all it takes. All right, so you got a little northern pike over here. Yeah, a little baby guy for the people with the large tanks. That's right. All right, so going down aisle number two here. Um, now, do you have a theme to these rows, or is it just kind of, hey, a this is where bit. we put this fish? Yeah, so we've got a little bit of a theme. We try to keep more community fish on the first few rows, one, two, three, four. Um, and then on the other sides, it starts moving into cichlids. But we do like to kind of mix things up a little bit, keeps people on their toes has people look through the room a little bit and it is really tough to actually start grouping everything together sure. uh, we've got about maybe 15 open tanks in here right now and that's for a big shipment that we got in coming in tomorrow and it's something where you, you, we open up tanks that kind of open themselves up and it, it makes a makes it so that it's it's not as easy sometimes to group everything together I in the room. Totally get it. And you, so you have a big shipment coming in tomorrow, yeah. the day after I'm here filming. Oh, sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. 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 All right, so I am really into angelfish personally. And I don't know, for me, it's just the darker the better. A black angelfish like that, man, I just want a whole tank full of these. Yep, angels are super popular fish in the hobby. It's something that's been around for a long time. And there's so many sweet color forms. There's even people that are working on blue strains and different types of different colors yeah. patterns it's insane what people are coming up with right now all right so there's the angelfish let's move on down the line here we got some cool crabs here oh yeah you got all of the crusty crabs those came out of Thailand it's something they do require land so it's not a fully aquatic species it right. is a terrestrial thing but something fun something yeah. different for some people who want something in between there's a rare form of a ghost shark in this tank it's the same as a rainbow shark with all red fins but this is a ghost shark where it's got white fins so one of our farms breed these fish we get them from them those are pretty amazing i always like the uh, the glow tetras something originally they weren't actually meant for the hobby they were actually used for a lot more biological a lot more like testing of water and everything um, because you could actually go ahead and shine a black light and you can actually see what was going on with the fish. So they would actually get counts of them for like sewer septic systems and everything. Um, but then they made their way into the hobby and it's something that, you know, not all pure hobbyists are a huge fan of them. Right, but they're for the kids, for the kids they love them. I mean, look at the, the great color on them. Absolutely. They shine underneath that blue LED too. Oh, my nieces would love these. Yep. I mean, so yeah. Just the huge colors there, for them. There is a little bit of controversy oh, yeah. about mm -hmm. these, you know? Yep. The big thing though too is with kids nowadays, they're not getting as much exposure to these kind of things. So sometimes, you know, if we can get kids to keep something like this and we can get them into fish keeping, it's really their entry level point where they get into that and then down the road, they're not gonna want those neon fish, the jelly bean fish. They're gonna want different fish Absolutely. and that's where they can kind of get into other things and really grow as a hobbyist. There's a yin and a yang to everything, isn't there? It's always a great starter fish for a lot of people. So again, you start with that one, and a lot of times you'll move on to something more advanced, something much cooler, you know, a nice planted tank where you get to see all the plants growing and everything. Absolutely. All right, so we're getting on to the end of the line here. Yeah. You got to stop at a few of the cool Pleco tanks imported from South America. We got some L047s in there. That's the Magnum Pleco. 
Those are amazing. Next door, relative of those ones, the Gold Nugget Pleco. This is a really great one, really cool one, popular in the hobby. It's got a great color to them, black body with yellow polka dots on them, really sweet. And then of course, my favorite tropical fish, the $3.99. <laughs> How much are these? Actually, $2.99. $2.99. $2.99. $2.99. Sale for you. The $2.99 Neon Tetra Special. There is something about Neon Tetras that I just love. I don't know. So guys, again, this fish shop is so enormous, this is gonna be a two-part episode. So hit that subscribe button when you do, hit that bell so you do not miss part two of this amazing fish shop. This was only half of this amazing fish shop, actually. So guys, as always, thanks for watching, and until the next animal adventure, love the planet and rattle on.